on tonight's show. We debate the 2018 title favorite, the Curryless Warriors, or the rest of the NBA field. In Crossfire, we argue if Kemba will be on the Hornets next season, and we recast White Men Can't Jump with players. And what do the Philadelphia 76ers have to do with this kangaroo? It's Tuesday, March 27th. The starters start now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the Starters Late Night, presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, watching later on YouTube, maybe listening to the podcast, doesn't matter to us, we're very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tess Mellis. My favorite Instagram account belongs to Dennis Scott. To his right, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Lily. Mm, Lily, and last, certainly not least, over yonder, that is the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. Hey! Hey yo, TK, what's up tonight? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And while there's no update on Gordon Hayward's return to the Celtics, we do have an important update on his feet. Apparently, Gordon Hayward is now really good at picking up marbles with his feet since it's been part of his rehab for months. This task of putting marbles into a tiny tray used to take him about five minutes, but now he's gotten it down to about 24 seconds, wow. which seems to be pretty good if you're talking Foot marbles, I guess. Anyways, it brings us to today's question, and since this is a late night show, we're getting weird. What's the weirdest thing you can do with your feet? Unfortunately, I don't have any cool foot tricks. I just got boring old standard feet, but I did find these kids on YouTube who are doing a whole bunch of weird foot things, and I think there are some good ideas in here. You know, the secret foot shake looking like house party. I guess they are having a house party. The guitar smash who, who hasn't done a guitar smash with their feet, and of course, makeup on your friend's faces, cutting paper. You can do so much with your feet, you just gotta work them out and get them flexible. As for me, I don't have flexible feet, but we want to hear from you creeps. So let us know on Twitter what's the weirdest thing you can do with your feet. Send us your best feet tweets to hashtag the starters. We will also be accepting any micro payments you might send in. Okay, mm, excellent. All right, we got a fun show tonight for you. We got Lee and Tass here going head to head in Crossfire. We're going to debate which coach is on the hottest seat as we near the end of the season. And we got a very solid play from tonight's games. But let's start with a little check in of the polls. This is the segment where we ask you, the starters fans on Twitter to weigh in on the NBA's biggest questions. And to do that, I turn it over to the poll master himself, the man with very inflexible feet, Trey mm -hmm. Kirby. It's <laughs> so true. Steph Curry has a knee injury. The other three Warriors All-Stars are banged up and they won't finish with the best record in the league for the first time in four seasons. So we asked who's the 2018 title favorite, the Warriors or the field? And wow, 60% of fans are taking the field. You guys agree? What do you I mean, think? It is any other team. How'd you vote, man? How'd you vote? I took the Warriors. If you're a gambler, you take the other 15 playoff teams. That's what you do. You play the odds. Right. Unfortunately, basketball isn't played one team versus 15 teams. It's played one versus one. The Golden State Warriors would be the favorite in any series. No disrespect to the Houston Rockets, who have had the best season in the NBA. But even if the Warriors finished with 58 or 59 wins, don't get to that 60 mark like they had the last three years that they got to the NBA Finals, don't care. I'm taking them in a series. And we all assume that everyone's healthy. We're not going to say, hey, James Harden's playing at 80%. Who cares? We're, play we're playing both teams healthy. I'm taking the Warriors. Uh, I am too, because all the wow. other teams in the field at the top have got problems. Cavs can't defend right now, and they can't beat the Warriors in the finals. What about the Rockets? The Rockets haven't beaten the Warriors in the playoffs, and they haven't proved it yet, this current version of the Rockets in the playoffs. And that, to me, is the biggest question, because this has been an incredible season for Houston. They're likely to win several awards. MVP, maybe Coach of the Year as well, a couple of others. But again, it doesn't really mean anything until they can do it and beat the Warriors in the playoffs. And now, all these Warriors injuries, uh, their players are likely to be back. Steph's the latest first round of the playoffs. He's going to be gone. Durant's a lock. He's coming back later this week. Yeah, Durant's coming back. Thompson should be back soon. Draymond as well. So these guys should all be pretty much healthy by the time they would likely face the Rockets anyway. So for me, Houston has home court advantage. They need that. That's very important. But I would still take the Warriors in, in any series in the playoffs today. Disagree with you guys. I think the field is the smart pick here. I agree with the 60% of the people out there clicking on that one for a couple of reasons, some you're naming. First of all, we don't know. Curry, yeah, maybe comes back three to four weeks. I'm sure the Warriors are still playing in the playoffs, but we don't know what type of Curry we're going to get back. Well, we, yeah, we saw, history saw, says he'll come back pretty strong. Well, history also said in 2016 when he came back from a knee injury, he wasn't the incredible Curry. He had some hit or miss games. He had some great 40-point performances in the playoffs. But then he also struggled in the finals. I assume yeah. they've, 20, he's, he's learned from that. A 22 bit. points per game, 
shot about 40% in those finals versus Cleveland when they lost. And, oh yeah, he's also had ankle issues, chronic ankle issues this season at least. Right. At least this season. And then I look at, of course, all these other guys that are injured. We already showed you the list. Clay's a bit of a worry. I mean, a fractured thumb. I, I, I get that they're probably being overly cautious with a lot of these guys to get them rest because they're locked in at the two seed. But it is a shooting hand. And it is Clay Thompson. That's the one thing he's really, really going to give you. So that worries me. Also, when Curry hasn't been out there, their offense has struggled. That's just the truth. He's that good. He's that good. And I know you got Durant and you got Draymond and you got Clay. Still, Warrior is, or Clay is, or excuse me, Curry is that important to that team. And finally, to me, the, the, the West is going to be the toughest it's ever been for this iteration of the Warriors. Without a doubt. Even the first round matchup, be it whoever they get, the Jazz or the Spurs or the Wolves, that's not going to be easy. If you see a Blazers team in the second round who's on fire right now, and, then the, and to me, then the Rockets. So that's why I go field. I just think it's going to be the most difficult challenge, even if Curry was there, even if he was healthy, and he's not right now. That's where I stand on that. 60% agree with me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you're really I, only I, taking two other teams, maybe three in the field, because you can write off most of those other teams. The, the Warriors aren't going to get beaten by those teams. The, it, All it I takes agree. is one team to I, beat them and knock them out. Four times. Can yeah. they beat them four times? I, that's hey, the big look, question. I, I, I think... Go ahead. No, I, do, I think those teams that you mentioned, the Spurs and the Jazz, can definitely take a game or two off the Warriors. But if everyone's there and healthy, I don't think they can beat them in, in seven games. And that's the big thing for me. If you're talking in a one-off uh, one scenario of a game, sure. But over the series, Warriors are always going to have home court except against the Rockets. They're going to be just as tough to beat as they've been in years gone by. They've got the experience. They've been there. They've got the players. They're still, they're still probably the best team. Well, the Warriors league. have never even faced that. Being on the road in a series. Yeah. Not having home court advantage. Yeah. I mean, Are the going to be a first. I guess. Are the Rockets going to win those first two at home? I don't know. I think it says more about the Warriors and how good they are than about the Rockets. The Rockets have had a great yeah, yeah. season, but this is an incredible team with two former MVPs that are still young guys. And, you know, most of your reasons are health reasons, sure. If yeah. they're not 100% healthy, yeah, it's a totally different debate. If there's no Steph there or their engine, I mean, I probably would take the Rockets. All right. Trey, next one. All right, James Harden feels like an MVP lock, but there are several other guys. You guessed it in the conversation. So we rounded up four and asked, who is the MVP runner-up leading the way? 58% of the vote, LeBron James. Gotta be one of the biggest honors of his career, guys. Do you agree <laughs> with the fans? LeBron, MVP runner-up. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, a bit further ahead than I thought. I thought it was gonna be a bit closer there between Davis and LeBron, because we've debated this all season, but I agree with the fans. I think it's LeBron. He's been incredible this season. Hasn't missed a game, which is something that he's never done in his career. He's never played 82 games, he's on track. He kind of wants to do that. I think that's sort of a, a, a mental hurdle that yeah. he wants to get over. And listen, he's been incredible. 55% from the field, 37% from downtown. You, you know the averages, and, and, and I know that the big sort of sticking point, particularly from you, is that one month. Well, he took a month off. He totally right, chilled to get games. all his guys traded. Yeah. And also, they're not even going to win 50 games, probably. They're not even that great a team. In yeah. the East, I don't think it's LeBron. I think this is crazy that people voted this way. Is he's going to be, he's going to get a lot of votes, don't get me wrong, but I would go Davis or Lillard over Is David going to win 50 games? Well, he's going to probably, he might win more. Right now, the Cavs have 44. They lost against Knight. Pelicans, another tough they loss lost. against the Blazers. 43. They're at 43. He could have more. Yeah. So could the Blazers. I mean, why is it so impressive? LeBron's got the numbers. What's so impressive about it, except that it's in his 15th season? Is that yeah. Well, we're grading him on such a curve. He's won yeah. three players of the month this year. Nobody else has won more than one. Right. And we're just, we're just grading him on this ridiculous curve. He's the second best player this season. I, I, I think that's it. I, yeah, you're right. I mean, the wins, DeMar DeRozan has a heck of a lot more wins. Other than that, it's pretty much a wash with yeah, Damian Lillard talking, and Anthony Davis. Yeah. When, when you come down to individual play, though, I mean, look at what LeBron, is. he's carried that team. Anthony there? Davis scores more per game. Well, LeBron gets LeBron more assists assist more. Well, yeah, then he gets more rebounds. <laughs> yeah. And their shooting numbers are the same. And he plays defense. Let's ask, talk about a little defense. Anthony yeah. Davis, third in the league in defensive Who would you rather have on your team? A top 10 defense since the All-Star break. Who would you rather anchored. have on your team if you could pick I one? I get it. And best player. <laughs> this also doesn't matter because it's runner-up and Harden's running away with it. But I'm just surprised that many people go LeBron as a runner-up. That's a little bit shocking to me when I think AD and Lillard maybe have better cases for this year. This is MVP. This isn't who's the best but player. Had, okay, so have, I know look, Rachel Nichols wants two awards, but have, this isn't what we have got Have Lillard here. and Davis had 14 rough games throughout the season, would you say, to combine th that makes up for LeBron's month of January? I would have to go saying, back and watch every well, single saying, one. Because like, you're grading him so harshly for that month of January when that's only 14 games out of the season. The other games he's been incredible. I'm, I'm judging him much more harshly at not being able to probably win 50 games in the Eastern Conference. I think that's a bit of an issue. Yeah. That's all. That's all. All right, final one. <laughs> I disagree with these guys tonight. I love it. Let's final one. Being a man. hater, being a hater, being a hater. Some of the hottest teams in the league are in the bottom half of the Western Conference playoff bracket. So we rounded it up and said, which West team would you least want to face in the playoffs? The leader, 35% of the vote, the Utah Jazz. You tell me if that's the right choice.
I'm looking forward to seeing them and the Warriors. If there is a team that can take a couple games off the Warriors, I, I think you it think is the Utah them? Jazz. Defensively, they like to get out on the perimeter and really mix up with it. And then you got Rudy Gobert to back it up. That could be a, a, a tough few games. I, I don't know how many they'd win, but yeah. without Steph there, you know, two, three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, That'd be crazy. Without yeah. Steph. I mean, yeah. Steph's not there yeah. the entire Rudy. series. I mean, Rudy Gobert is the X Factor, of course, in that series. If he's healthy, then the Jazz are a completely different team. But coming into the season, considering Gordon Hayward left in the offseason, no one thought the Jazz were going to be in this position where they could be a really, really yeah. tough out in that first round. They're good at home. They're good on the road. They're very disciplined defensively. Uh, I'm not sure they've got the firepower to really, uh, you know, take the Warriors, obviously, in, in seven games. But certainly they can make it rough for them. And if they were to face it again, the team like the Rockets, I think uh, Gobert sort of nullifies a little bit of what they do there with Clint Capella, but of course then they have to protect the perimeter, which they can't do quite as well in the, uh, against the Rockets. Donovan yeah. Mitchell, if he gets focused on as a mm. primary target, he's really their only sort of explosive offensive yeah. player. That'll be interesting. I agree with you guys. Can you believe it? <laughs> oh, my yes. producer told me I had to agree uh, right, with you because right. we're running out of time. we got to take a break. Lots more still to come. When we come back, Leon Tass, they won't be agreeing at all. They'll step into the crossfire to debate which injury is more worrisome, Curry or Kyrie? Don't go anywhere. No one has ever agreed in Crossfire, not once. <laughs> Crossfire! Welcome to Crossfire, presented by Tiso. Here's how this works. The champ takes on the challenger in three rounds of head-to-head -head debate. At the end of it all, I'll declare a winner. As always, the championship belt is on the line. Here we go, gentlemen. Our first question, Steph Curry out with an MCL sprain. As we talked about, Kyrie Irving, he's recovering from a knee injury. We don't know when either guy will be back. So tell me, which injury is more worrisome? Here we go. Uh, it is Steph Curry's because originally it was like three weeks and he's going to be reevaluated and be back for the first round of the playoffs. Then Steve Kerr said, oh, he's definitely not playing. So I'm a little concerned politics. because That's they politics. don't know exactly when he's going to come back. And listen, the Warriors are championship favourites. They don't just want to have a good run. They're out there to win the title this year. So they need Steph back if they are going to do that. I'm just a little concerned. I hope that we'd, uh, two years ago it doesn't repeat itself. The Warriors are great. I'm, I'm far more worried about Kyrie Irving, who's got a longer timeline, three to six weeks. If it gets close to that sort of five, six weeks, that's into the second round, and they need Kyrie Irving to potentially beat a LeBron James in a second round matchup. I'd love to see They that. need him desperately because he'd be coming back in the second round. He's got to catch his flow. They've got such a good defense. Kyrie would be in a perfect situation, but he's got to get back a heck of a lot sooner. All right, great start, great start. Question number two, guys. Hornets guard Kemba Walker, he's tired of missing out on the playoffs. And it sounds like he may be open to maybe moving on. He's disgruntled, and rightfully so. So I want to know, will Kemba be on the Hornets next season? Here we go. Oh, yeah, because they would be terrible without him. They're bad this year with him. Mm. And you might say, blow it up. Well, you can't. I mean, they have so many guys out there paying past next year in double-digit millions of dollars. Dwight, Batum, Marvin Williams, MKG, Cody. They're already poor in attendance. They can't blow it up. This is one of those situations where they got to stick with the only real solid piece that they have. That only real solid piece they have is only the only thing that's going to bring them back anything in a trade. So it's time to move on. They've got to read between the lines. You mentioned that Kemba is sick of watching the playoffs. He wants to play in the playoffs. It's not happening there in Charlotte. He's been great for them too. The last two years, he's been an all-star. So he's done the right thing by the team. He's now saying, you know what, this is not really working out. Even though he's building a massive dream home in Charlotte, which I don't like. But I think it's, uh, <laughs> I like I think it's time for uh, Kemba and the Hornets to move on. Just hit that reset button. All right, final one. Great rounds here. Final yeah, one. really great. White men <laughs> can't jump was released in theaters on this day in 1992. Wow. But let's pretend, let's pretend they're remaking the classic. Which two NBA teammates would you cast to play Billy and Sidney? Here we go. I'm going with Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray from the Denver Nuggets because you need a really good combination of guys who work together but don't necessarily look like they're going to work really well together. That's what's been happening. It's one of the bright spots for the Denver Nuggets this year. These two guys really know how to work well together. You can just see them out on the court per uh, perfecting that one-two game perfectly. They can both shoot uh, from outside. They can both work inside. I think it's a great combination. Nicola and Jamal for me. Ooh. Traymond Green would be the best Wesley style. He would not stop talking. And his teammate is Zaza Pachulia. What? 
Talk about a guy who doesn't look the part. Oh, he Zaza. Play the part, I but know. he's got some offense in him. He hasn't been in the league. He <laughs> well, hasn't been it. in the league 15 seasons because he can't score. Put him in a two-on-two. Two, give him a little space. Uh, he'll make it happen. All right, all right, all right, all right. Nickel is gonna. Great uh, late-night <laughs> battle here, but the winner. <laughs> And new <laughs> Crossfire champion, doing it with a Zaza, oh, Tess Mellis. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it for that. <laughs> when we come back, which coach is on the hot seat? And a whole lot more. The Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Back with the Starters. Let's play fill in the blank. TK, my man, let's do this. Yeah. I got your skeets. We're at the point in the season where the hot seat that really heats up as the underperforming coaches start to come under fire as their teams uh, underperform. Rumors are already flying around the internet, guys. So fill in the blank. The coach on the hottest of hot seats is blank. Lee, I see we agree. Yeah, Frank it's Vogel. Frank Vogel. It's been a pretty rough two years in Orlando there. I thought coming from Indiana, being a defensive coach, that he would really improve that defense. We know they didn't have a lot to work with, but it's actually gotten worse. And uh, I think there's already sort of a lot of speculation that they're going to move on from him anyway. Just hasn't worked out. But things haven't been great in Orlando for a while. He wasn't able to uh, really improve them at all. Yeah, to add to that, I mean, you brought up the record. They're 51 and 104 with yeah. Vogel under them. Uh, He's in the second year, finishing the second year of his four-year deal, but that fourth year is a team option, so they'd be moving on really from one year. Mark Stein already reporting this news that it's mm. likely he's gone. And, uh, yeah, exactly like you said, I think we had higher hopes. I think he'll get another photo. job, though. Yeah, I uh, think so, too. Yeah. You always get another job yeah. in the NBA as a head coach, and, and he probably deservedly so, but mm -hmm. it's not working there in Orlando, so I go Vogel, too. I think Jeff Hornacek is definitely on the hot seat because it's New York, but Mike Malone, now that we're seeing the Nuggets sort of fade from the playoff mm. picture... Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to make it. They got a, a tough game uh, against OKC this week. It just looks like a tough sled. This team won 40 games a couple years ago. They signed Paul Millsap to a monster deal. Yep. Nikola Jokic is their best player. He's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem to get along extremely well with Mike Malone. The offense is cooking, mm -hmm. uh, but the D is not there. So I, I feel like because that sort of the, the top end of the roster is locked in, the coach is going to go. Yeah, it the, just sure and, seems and that And way. the expectation's higher for the Nuggets than... Even the Pistons yeah. with Stan Van Gundy, or obviously the Magic yeah. with Vogel, or the or the Knicks with Hornacek. They've been waiting the last yeah. couple of years to make the plow season. Yeah. All right. Trey, next one. Close friends and PB and J ingredients. LeBron James and Dwayne Wade faced off in Miami tonight, and while they're still friends, Dwayne swatted LeBron so nasty that he might get kicked off the banana boat this summer. I'm just kidding, guys. They dapped up right after. They're still a PB and J sandwich, nonetheless. Fill in the blank. Wade blocking LeBron was blank. Go ahead. It was a hashtag TBT, Throwback Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> because Dwayne Wade is the second best shot blocking guard of all time. And he may end up the best statistically if he plays another season. And that was what he used to do a lot all the time. Block guys, come from nowhere and really smash them. The dunk blocks, I like to call, you know, those really emphatic ones. So uh, that was it. We used to see a lot more of that when Dwayne was a little more spry, but he's still very... Uh, Wiley for a uh, veteran of this league. He's quite opportunistic on that help defense for sure. From throwback to foreshadowing, because I think these two teams are going to find a way to match up in the postseason. I think they're going to get to 3 6, and we're going to see a Heat team as they you know, dealt with the Cavs pretty well tonight. If there's one team that can play LeBron, it's the bodies of James Johnson, Justice Winslow. Josh Richardson, yeah. they got a bunch throw of guys to throw at him, and then Dwayne Wade will come help on, on the mm -hmm. defense. But they've got a nice little five-game run here. It's a beauty. The Heat play the Bulls, the Nets, the Hawks, the Hawks, the Knicks. So they're in the eighth spot, but they can jump up and maybe get a 3-6 with the with the LeBron James versus Wade. That, that would be great. I kept it simple, went clean. That was clean. Yeah. You know, a lot of those times when you come over so for that sort of help defense swipe, you get a bit of the arm, you get a bit of something else, but no, that was all ball. And Wade, I'm with you. I mean, Easily one of the greatest shot mm -hmm. blockers of all time at the guard position, especially only being, what, 6'4". He's over a 1,000 career blocks when you count the playoffs. Wild, wild stuff. All right, final one, Trey. All right, Ben Simmons gave a presentation to his 76ers teammates at breakfast this morning, and his topic, Australia might. <laughs> he talked wildlife, dingoes and such, and stood next to a screen grab from a classic Australian video. 
of a guy straight up throwing down <laughs> with a kangaroo. Save the dog. Punch the kangaroo. Look at him square oh, up. Yeah. And they're throwing dukes. It's on. Oh. It's on. You want a piece of this, Steve? <laughs> Come get some, Steve. Typical Australian stuff right there. But guys, fill in the blank. If you had to give a presentation, your presentation would be on. Mm. Oh, anything? What you got? Well, I'm uh, going a little bit like Ben Sims there with some Australian slang words because uh, next year we might go to Australia for these uh, for these. It's two been downgraded games. to might? <laughs> yeah. Well, we were really confident we were going. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's all right. I'm working on some things here. Yeah. Uh, but if we do go, I'm going to have to give you guys some lessons in Australian slang words because some of the words you use here could be misinterpreted in Australia. Right. So if you I say, can't be rooting for a team. No, don't, no rooting uh, right. when you're in the stands. Yeah. Uh, you're barracking. And okay. uh, if you're putting on a pair of thongs, it's okay. You're allowed to wear your thongs out in public. Those, are, everyone <laughs> can see those, those are flip flops. That's right. Not that's underwear. right. So okay. if someone says to you, I've got your pair of thongs, don't be offended. Be like, oh, great. That's great. I'll wear them. Okay. Not it. Mm. How do you know I don't wear thong thongs? <laughs> you don't well, know. Well, don't maybe you do. Me. Maybe you do. <laughs> yeah. What do you got? Uh, I'm going with Greece. Let's stay with the countries. Zito Yelada, happy Independence Day. Ooh. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> no, it means I will sing forever! Okay. Are you guys want Australia sort of greens? I'm just going rad. I'm gonna do a presentation on the greatest movie ever made. Ah, uh, yeah. John Fordham from John Australia, Fordham, part of the yeah. soundtrack. 1986 BMX movie starring Crew Jones conquering, conquering Hell Track. Taking down Bart Taylor? Are you crazy? He can take down Bart right? Taylor? Yeah, man. Oh man. Yeah. But you can go to the Olympian rap. Bart Taylor. Bart Taylor <laughs> went down on Helltrack? Yeah, man. Oh, There's a kicks bowl involved. It was crazy. When we come back, very solid play. You can go to Radelaide when you're in Australia. <laughs> We asked you, what's the weirdest thing you can do with your feet? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Maybe you, maybe you typed your responses with your feet. Who knows? Trey, what do you got? Yeah, we got some weird answers, but I want to highlight one guy, Lyndon, who says, I can scratch my nose. I said, no way, prove it. He says, how's this for proof? Is this oh. good enough? How do we that know that's good, good though? Well, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. But then he sent in video proof oh. of himself literally scratching his <laughs> nose with his own foot. It looks like a thumb, bro. <laughs> Is that a thumb foot uh. toe you got going on there? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, Lyndon. <laughs> wow. Late night. Let's Late have night. some fun. <laughs> uh, wow, not a good night for us. We all had the Spurs. We picked this, uh, you know, obviously before the game happened tonight. They lost to the Wizards. They're not a good road team. That's an X for us. Lee VSP. Yeah, it comes from Toronto. It's the Raptors here. The little uh, tic-tac-toe, zigzag, zoo, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, a little uh, nice finish from OG off their bounce pass. That's what I call a very solid play. Very solid. Tomorrow night on NBA TV, Cavs, Hornets, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then a little bit later, I was going to say, but quite a bit later, late night, ah. Wednesday, 1 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> oh, poor Lee. <laughs> Poorly. I like uh, the you'll be fine. Wow. You'll be right. fine. We're having a blast. We're yeah, having a great. blast. Right. Right. Uh, How big are those basketballs? Not too big. All right. <laughs> That's it for us tonight. We'll see you at 1 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, we'll see you tomorrow or Thursday or tomorrow, depending how you look at it. Brace the night. Brace the morning. Brace everything. <laughs>